Okay, I'm on video right now, and I'm going to put you on speaker, okay? All right, Tina, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. What news, Barb? Breaking news. I mean, this is big, girl, because you told me. Wasn't it last night and night before that you had a feeling something big was going to happen here in the United States? Yeah. Yes. I mean, majorly. Okay, but Boston, at a marathon, bombs going off. Two of them, at least. Bombs. At the Boston Marathon. Really? Yes. There is some, two, I think one or two dead so far. That this is a terrorist attack. There is simply no way of knowing. Maybe a terrorist attack. That as soon as this happens, anyone with money. I knew some. I felt something too, but you you felt it very, very, very strongly. The Lord just moved up on you mightily, and you felt this that something was about to happen. Well, yeah, and, and it was a distress felt, you know, it was so distressful, it was, and I didn't know, and I didn't know how to save anybody. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I'm just letting you know, it happened. Um, wow. I know that you've got feelings before, and big things has happened before, but I, I just wanted people out there there to hear this on foe because I didn't think you had heard anything on the radio uh, on TV and I just got home because I'd been in town and I had flipped on the news and there we go it you know it was at the finish line of the Boston Marathon they have over there and bombs just went off two of them one on each side of the street one went off first, and then the other went off. And nobody even, I mean, they didn't have security for this? Yeah, there's security everywhere. Oh, my gosh, and they got it past security. Yeah, it was in trash can. So far. Really? Yes. Wow. I mean, girl. Uh, we don't know yet, Neil, what's, what's involved. I mean, well, can you hear it in the background? Trash can and every nook and cranny. Yeah. Uh, they're probably trying to get people out of that immediate area and disperse the crowd so we don't have so many people gathered in one area who could then be perhaps even further victims of this. Wow. But it's one of these things the police are going to be going and probably hearing from all types of complaints or calls from around the city. We heard one where perhaps there's even a control. I think what's going to happen is more major than uh, this, though. Oh, yeah. I think this is only the beginning. But I had to yeah. let you know that what 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 you what the Lord is speaking to you especially uh, is is being fulfilled right now really um, it's only the beginning of major more things is coming yes I mean it's major what's coming and um, it's and it's and it's what he was saying too yesterday when I prayed the time is short for everybody and they just don't know even how short it is yeah yeah I mean and it is because it's beginning it, I mean it yeah this is the beginning yeah see I just felt led by the Lord strongly to do this with you I mean he spoke directly to to you and let you know yeah. that something was coming and I wanted the people to understand that there is a spirit of prophecy that are on more than one person yes there is because Acts 2 17 says so mm -hmm. so so we need to get to the point that we're letting the anointing flow within us Yes. So we will people know. To, uh, yes, because people need to realize that they have it too. They just need to be in tune with Raha Kadesh to get it. Yeah, for that. I mean, everyone has it. For that, well, it's one of the gifts, you know. It is, it's a gift, and, it, and Acts 2.17 says that. So I believe everyone has it if they are staying close to the Lord right now and filled up with the Raha Kadesh. And I think, I think today I had to do this as soon as I, I mean, it's like God just said, do it, do it now. People's got to wake 
up. They got to know that they have an anointing embedded in them and that yes. they need to let that anointing to begin to flow in the spirit. Yes. Let the root Kadesh flow upon you people. Let that anointing be yes. to begin. Yes, because then, then he will begin to talk to you and reveal things to you to prepare you for the, what is about to happen. Yes. See, he doesn't desire, desire anyone to perish. No, he doesn't. He wants us all to come to the truth and the knowledge of his son, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, right yes. now. And you've got to start letting that anointing flow in your life. It's perilous times, people. Wake yes. up. Yes, they need to wake up. They need to know time is short. The door's getting ready to be shut. Yes. I mean, people yes. are just, you know, they want to follow along uh, uh, after a like a prophetess, like Elizabeth or somewhere. One. Uh, no, you have that anointing inside you if you'll wake it up. Yes. And he's telling me very strong, it is time to awaken it. People, I want to let you know that this woman here, Tina, fought me on that for a little bit one time. I said, do you know that you are called and chosen as a prophet and you have the gift of prophecy? And she said, oh, no, not me. Because we asked the question, who am I? Yeah. I mean, she, she said, no, not me. I'm not, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. You know what? He doesn't choose us on our worthiness. He chooses oh, us. That's it right there. Only by the blood of the Lamb, Yeshua yes. HaMashiach, am I worthy. And, my, and am I made righteous in that way. He is the only one that I am yes. righteous through. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Because it's not about us and how no. perfect we can make ourselves. It is about him and how perfect he can make you. Yes. Yes. And all the gifts, all the gifts are yours if you choose to let the root Kadesh anoint them and let them begin to grow in you. You know that spirit of discernment. We need, you need the spirit of discernment. Or you'll believe anything and anyone and be deceived. Yes. And you need it now more than any time in your life. You need to that 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 spirit of of um, a mercy. It is a spirit, a mercy to be merciful unto people in these perilous times. Yes, you know, because the Lord has revealed time is short. So if time is short, we need to have more mercy on people so that they will see Him and see the true light. Yes. I mean, some people have been aggravated at me because I talk about Elizabeth, you know, of being a false prophet. Well, being a prophet myself, and you know this, Tina, because you are, I know you are one too. If we do not warn against the false prophets, who will? Yeah. Because it takes a prophet to recognize the spirit of the false prophet. Yes, yeah, because we are blessed with discernment. And we have to speak the truth to warn people not to go into that a bondable thing, or as a, well, as Yeshua said, the blind will lead the blind, and they both fall in the ditch. Well, if that b prophet is a blind, false prophet, and and she and they're walking, she or who, who, there's more than one, well, more than one out there. Bless Rick Warren's heart, and you know I have compassion on him for what his son did, but you know what? By him teaching Christ, uh, a Christian, them, you know, at, yeah. Chrislam. Chrislam. That's it. Yep. He's trying to unite. He's trying to unite two religions into one, and that's not what new man. What one new man is. I mean, God I mean, says the Jew and the Gentile together will make one new man. And, and they will believe. And they will believe on the Messiah. 
the Jews will turn and say and and cry and mourn because then they will realize who the true Messiah is and that, that the true Messiah was back there 2,000 years ago. They're going to have an awakening. People, they are going to have an awakening that will boggle your mind. Yes, they are. The word promises. Yes. But we're in perilous times. We need to let all of those gifts begin to awake in us as we're putting the armor of God on. We battle principalities and powers of the air, people. Not flesh and blood. You know what? When I come up against false prophets, I'm coming up against that false, that false demon, that so false element, that evil entity that is taking a hold of these people. That's what I'm going up against. Yeah. And I have to put my body and my, the army of God up on me to protect me. It's a warfare, people. A warfare. And you've got to wake up and begin to let the Ruh Kadesh flow in you. And that's why I want you to know Tina has the gift. She has the gift. You know, as you were saying that, the Lord said to read out of Second Corinthians chapter 10, because the people need to understand we are not battling a physical warfare anymore. No. It is totally spiritual. And you have to be having the armor of God on in Ephesians 6. But it says in first in Second Corinthians chapter 10, it says, Now it is myself, Shaul Paul, making an appeal to you with the meekness and forbearance that comes from the Messiah. I am... I who am considered timid when face to face with you, but intimidating from a distance. But I beg you not to force me to be intimidating when I am with you, as I expect to be towards some who regard us as living in a worldly way. For although we do live in the world, we do not wage war in a worldly way, because the weapons we use to wage war are not worldly. On the contrary, they have God's power for demolishing strongholds. We demolish arguments and every arrogance that raises itself up against the knowledge of God. We take thought every captive and make it obey Yeshua HaMashiach. And when you have become completely obedient, then you will be ready to punish every act of disobedience. You are looking at the surface of things. If anyone is convinced that he belongs to the Messiah, he should remind himself that we belong to the Messiah as much as he does. For even if I boast a little too much about the authority the Lord has given us, authority to build you up, not tear you down, I am not ashamed. So people need to understand and realize that we are not battling against worldly things. We are battling against the principalities and Amen. powers in the spiritual realm. Amen. And we have to put our armor on, and we have to start letting that um, that spirit activate in our life, and, and let those uh, things flow. You know what? Right now, God is restraining Satan. He is for a purpose, and he's restraining Yeshua from coming here to Earth. For a reason. God is the restrainer that's keeping everything as is for right now. But you know what? God is going to step back one day and quit restraining. And God is going to say, son, go get him. Then he's going to go, Satan, do what you will for a short period of time. Because then... That's when, that's when the fiery testings will begin and the wrath of God will be poured out upon this earth and all wickedness will fall before him. Yes. I mean... He's using it for his will and glory. And, yes. and also the Lord said to read Hebrews 4.12, The word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword, and it penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit. Joints and marrow, it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. You know, we're not your judges. The word of God is your judge. Yes. And he wants you to know that. Read Hebrews 4.12. This word that we read from, that is your judge.
judge that is judging you right now because it goes all the way into the rock of death and your soul it, and it and it penetrates into there to speak mm. truth to you and it can convicts you of when you're doing sin mm-hmm. so that you can ask for forgiveness and walk out of that sinful life and walk away from that sinful nature so god is wanting you to know that it is his word that is judging you is by your word he is judged i mean we're we not judges you judging you right now um it talks about you know we're talking about the rock of death and the Lord showed me that, you know, our emotions, we let our emotions run our lives, but we're not supposed to. We're supposed to let the Rehakadesh. And in Galatians 5.22, it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, and self-control. Nothing in the Torah stands against such things. Because you see, if you are controlled by the Rock Kadesh, then the fruits of the Spirit that we just spoke is what should be ruling you. And that is how we should be presenting ourselves to each other. Full of love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and humility and self-control. These are the same attributes that our our Heavenly Father has and His Son has. Because they have the Rock Kadesh in them. Because that is how we are all connected by that umbilical cord. Amen. It says above that in 516, what I'm saying is this, run your lives by the Spirit, and you will not do what your old nature wants. For the old nature wants what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit wants what is contrary to the old nature. Mm-hmm. These oppose each other so that you find yourself able to carry out your good intentions. But if you are led by the Spirit, then you are not in subjection to the system that results from reverting the Torah into legalism. So the Lord is calling us to stand up with the Rock of Desh right now because it is a spiritual battle we are in yes. until the end. Amen. It is not physical. It is not worldly. It is a spiritual battle. And you need to realize that and study about the Rock of Desh and who he is and what he is in you. Yes. And not look for men as their, your guide. You need to look at the Bible yourself. You need to study the scriptures and show yourself approved. You shouldn't take just my word or Tina's word or anyone else's word. Get the Bible out. Get the Bible, people. The Bible and begin to read and search and study it. And know that we are a peculiar people. For And uh, 2 Peter is it second yeah, Peter it's that it second says Peter that one. we are a chosen nation? We are a peculiar people. We are called out to be that priesthood, that nation upon this earth to shine forth his glory and praise us. We are to be that people, and we are to let that anointing flow with us and begin to bubble and grow and just that anointing be so, I mean, just just overflowing. Yes, there needs to be an overflowing anointing. Because it is time. It is time, people. Because what if it happened in your town? on your street and you're walking by and God says run and you're going oh, that's stupid and the trash can blows up and you die hmm would it be because you did not obey and feel that anointing and that discerning spirit that said run I mean that's just a little bit that's just a little bit that he will he will control you he will he has designed you for this day and this hour just like he did Esther Yes, and it's First Peter chapter 2 where it talks about that we are, um, it says, but we are a chosen people, the king's Kohanim, his priest, a holy nation, a people for God to possess. Yes. And then uh, the Lord just showed me in um, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 20. First of all, understand this. No prophecy of Scripture is to be interpreted by an individual on his own. For never has a prophecy come as a result of human willing. On the contrary, people moved by the Raha Kadesh spoke a message from God. Are you hearing this? We're confirming what the Lord said at the beginning. The Raha Kadesh is who's leading us to speak these messages to you. He is the one who is speaking through us. He is the one who is giving us the gift of prophecy. Because we are studying his word. And see, it says by an individual. 
An individual yes. can't do it on his own. No. We have to be filled up with the raw Kadesh yes. to understand and to hear him speak to us to get yes. these messages. And it is important that you get that anointing. Okay. The ten virgins, okay? One, two, five of them were foolish, five of them were more wise. What was the whole subject about? The oil. The oil that you t should have in your canister that is full and your lamp that has got full, you know. Y you need to be ready and prepared. But if you're foolish, when the time comes, you won't have that extra oil, that extra anointing oil that you need. You need to get it right now. Time is short. That's what God is speaking to me to tell you. Get it now. Because then it'll be too late. Yep. Yep, because the door is getting ready to be shut. I mean, you know, the night before last, the Lord just spoke to me and was telling me something was getting ready to happen. And I mean, yes. it distressed me. She and called me in distress. He revealed that to me, that time is short. The door is mm -hmm. getting ready to be closed. So, you know, people, people. It is time to wake up, come out of your slumber, and realize we are in the waning hours before Yeshua comes. Yes, we are. The, the things that's going to be happening from now on are going to be fast and furi uh, furious and terrible. There are going to be things happening that it will be so fast that it will be mind-boggling. I mean, I can't give you a day or an hour. I can't say, oh, well, this thing is going to repeat itself. Uh, you know, the fifth month, uh, fifth day of the fifth month. No, I can't say that. I don't know. All I know, there are going to be more dreadful things than this happen. Yes. This is only the beginning, people. It's only yes, the beginning. Yes. But see, if you have your oil filled, your lamps trimmed and ready, when that time comes, that you will be covered. You just go ahead and walk on into the ark, and you're covered by the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach. It is important, my people. That's what yes, God is. is saying. It is important, my people, to wake up. To wake up. To who He truly is and who you are in Him. Yes. Yes. But, do you have any more things to add? I mean, people, you can That's go... the Lord spoke as you were speaking. Those are the verses He said to read. So, so I the verses that needed to be read today. Okay, I, I'm. Let me finish this. I'm about to click off. Okay, honey. Okay. Father, in the name of Yeshua, I turn this video over to you. Let your people awake. Let them yes. become anointed. And Father, let yes. let us do your holy will in your holy name. Amen and amen.